Uh, hi, this is Eric Armstrong with New South Wales uh, DPI at Wagga. Um, I'm a pulse research agronomist uh, and looking at the role of pulses in farming systems in southern New South Wales. Uh, we do a lot of work uh, jointly funded by the department and GRDC. And what I want to show today is some uh, pulse crops and nod nodulation and how to look at them and realising that this is the uh, source of uh, atmospheric nitrogen and a big bo boost into farming systems. So the fabian crop here, uh, we inoculated this actually at sowing using uh, water injection. I just want to show you uh, the, how the uh, nodulation takes a hold and how to sample. And we're trying to encourage farmers to actually inoculate their crops at sowing and to get these nodules. Uh, the idea is when you sample them, they usually, it depends on the soil type, how free and easy it is. Sandy soils are much easier. Heavier soils, a bit harder. Just be a bit careful you don't knock the nodules off. But uh, gently dig them out with a shovel, as I did, and you can actually give them a little wash or dunk in water. Just have a bit of a look. Uh, and they come up much clearer and fresher. And you can see here, here's the, this is a faber bean, this is the seed and the actual nodules are uh, scattered throughout. This uh, is a characteristic where we actually water inject. The nodules can be scattered all over the, the root system. Uh, generally, this is a good example here maybe of what happens when you actually slurry inoculate the seed and you can see the nodules are compact around the crown. Uh, these nodules are very effective in, the, in this instance and they, this crop is just starting to get the factory the nitrogen fixing factory going and it'll start peaking in the next few weeks and in springtime and uh, of course the nitrogen is related to the amount of dry matter in in the uh, that the legume fixes so the crop around here is a couple of different sowing dates uh, usually the big bulkier ones will fix the more nitrogen largely because of the dry matter uh, it's only uh, early spring or not even the end of winter yet so this crop really has a long way to go and will fix a lot of nitrogen uh, put into the farming system because in southern New South Wales you have to remember that these legumes evolved from uh, northern hemisphere on alkaline soils so we're trying to grow this crop on an acidic soil pH below 5 uh, and quite often both the plant and the, and the rhizobia species are more adapted to alkaline soils. So this is sort of uh, in, very interesting research and uh, it's actually working out fairly well. A lot of these legumes are getting to grow really well but the essential thing is you've got to inoculate every year because the rhizobia will not survive for um, many years on the, these acidic soils. The exception to this is, uh, is lupins which actually have evolved on more acidic soils and in many instances you may get away without inoculating if you have a long history of, his of lupins on, on your paddock. As a take home message really, it's important on our acidic soils in southern New South Wales to inoculate pulse crops every year and it's important to remember that it's a living uh, organism and it's important that farmers actually go and check their crops uh, maybe six weeks, eight weeks after sowing. Dig them up like this, it's a pretty simple process. Uh, not many people, it's easy to look above the ground, but not many people look below. So we encourage people to have a look, to make sure the nodules are there, the nitrogen fixing factory is there. And remember that these uh, plants, the nitrogen, they fix about 25 kilos per tonne of dry matter. So you can roughly estimate your tonnage production. And this nitrogen is a biological form of nitrogen which means it's a slow release and will be available and benefit next year's wheat crop and highly likely the wheat crop after.